Okay, so on YouTube, Crossbones asked, hey guys, I've got a question. A friend of mine and I, I are going to New Zealand in July this year. We are planning to work for 10 months, then travel two months all over New Zealand. So we are looking for a city to work and live in for these 10 months. We are currently playing table tennis, so we are bound to cities with clubs. We are current, uh, sorry, these are the options, Whangarei, Toranga, and Wellington. So my question is, which of these cities is the best for finding a job and also is cheap for renting apartments? I would appreciate it so much if you guys could answer my question. So much. <laughs> All right. all right cool so basically uh crossbones want us to compare uh work and like living opportunities in fangare wellington and toranga all right so uh there are three cities on the north island of new zealand and they're actually three pretty cool cities uh, let's be honest it's not uh, there's no there's no bummer right here so here's where they are um this one is fangare this one is toranga and this one here is wellington now, if we start straight away with the cost of living, um, here's how we would rank the places. Uh, Wellington will be by far the most expensive place for cost of living. It actually currently has rent more expensive than Auckland has, which has, which Auckland has always been the most expensive city in the country. So Wellington is really on the rise. So cost of living, this will be the most expensive city to spend some time in, um, especially since you want to stay 10 months there. Uh, now the second uh, most expensive will be Toranga um, because Toranga is kind of a big city kind of developing and everything um, but if you do stay in uh, you know like long termers in hostels for example uh, which is pretty cool to do especially in Toranga there's quite a bunch of a hostel that we, that we like a lot we see you Pacific Coast Lodge mm -hmm. um, so yeah so that would be the second one and the cheapest one will be Fangare which is a, a little bit north of Auckland so that's basically how we would rank them um, now weather wise because we see weather is of prime importance if you're spending 10 months somewhere, right? Yeah. How would you rank them? Yeah, so in terms of the warmest weather and probably the most sunniest days, uh, Whangarei in the north is the warmest place. That's because actually the north of New Zealand is closer to the equator. Then after that, following that same logic, um, then Toranga is pretty good. And it's also on the coast as well. So it's, you know, it's got nice, um, cool, well, nice warm weather by the by the sea, and then finally, we Wellington is the coldest out of the three, and also Wellington is renowned for being super windy. So be prepared for very, yeah, changeable weather. It's it rains on and off all the time. It's super windy, um, but it's slightly colder temperatures compared to the north. All right, now job-wise, um, obviously you're gonna to want to find a job since you're gonna be here for 10 months. Obviously, you know, you need to make a living at some point. Um, job-wise, your best bet to get some job will be Toranga. Uh, there is really plenty of job opportunities, especially a ton of seasonal jobs that are actually underpaying pretty well. Um, on top of it, Toranga has plenty of working hostels, which means if you stay in a hostel, they find you a job. It's just so easy, it relieves this entire stress from your trip. So I do personally really like that. Now, second will be Wellington with heaps of cafe, retails. And if you look at, at some of our videos that we have, we actually do talk about all the different jobs and opportunities, jobs and uh, opportunities in Wellington. So Wellington will be your second uh, best best bet for jobs. And then your last best bet for job would be Fangare, because in Fangare, um, yes, there are plenty of jobs available, but there is also a lot of uh, people because it's so close to Auckland, there's a lot of people commuting and sometimes going to work there. So it, it's pretty cool. It's it's. You know, you get you get choices everywhere. Now, um, as for traveling out, um, what are your best bets? Well, um, as you can see from the position of Toranga, that's actually a really good place to base yourself if you want to explore more of the North Island. You can easily get to the Gisborne region, which is this bit right here, or also known as the East Cape. And that has loads of really lovely beaches. There's some awesome road trips that you can do from over there. Also, you can get to the central North Island, so that's places like Topor and Rotorua and that has a lot of really awesome activities to do around there as well like there's geothermal um, areas, there's Maori culture, there's lots of adventure activities like skydiving and bungee jumping so that's all accessible in the centre and then it's not really too far to go to Auckland if you want to experience that big city life or 
you know, just just check out what Auckland's all about, then that's not too far as well. And then on the side is the Coromandel, which again has lovely beaches, um, hot water beach, so you can make your own little hot pool in the sand, which is really cool. As and well. Charles, you are super well connected if you're in Yeah. So then second on my list would be Fangaray because north of Fangaray is really a lot to explore in the Northland region. Again, we're thinking about the beaches and the coast as well. There's the Bay of Islands where you can go and do a lot of water activities. Um, and also you have access to Auckland as well, um, which we've already gone over. And then finally on the list where you're probably a little bit more out of the way of everything is Wellington. You can, I obviously you can do some day trips um, out to the like northern regions of Wellington. For instance, there's the Kapiti Coast, there's um, the uh, Wairapa and there's like some wine regions around here. So you can go to those places, but getting over to the South Island usually requires quite a long ferry trip and just you're a little bit more stuck in Wellington if yeah. you are based there so yeah definitely and that's my things to do there is quite a lot of things to do everywhere you know Wellington is very much of a city life so you get the awesome cafes bars nightlife you also get amazing museum like the Te Papa Museum you can also go visit the Weta Caves there is a few good hikes as well where you have a couple of parks around um, and uh, if you do have your own car you can make your way to Cape Palisa which is really awesome so there is quite a few a few fun things to do here in Taranga well there is obviously the massive base you can go swim with dolphins uh, you can climb the mount so in Mount Maganui that's the posh suburb of Taranga uh, if you want to try that out and you can escape out of Taranga quite easily to go to the Karanga Heike Gorge to go do some kayaking around and you know as we mentioned like a lot of things to escape and in Fangare, you can explore the whole Northland in only a short drive, which is really amazing. There is heaps to do. Pahia, the Bay of Island, 144 islands dotting the beautiful bay, and dolphin swimming as well, uh, uh, skydiving. Just it's really awesome. And in Fangare itself, you get plenty of amazing hikes. You get the Fangare Falls, and you also get some conservation centers like the Kiwi North, uh, where you actually kind of. Um, Heal kiwi. I mean, you yeah. don't. Just, you know, someone yeah. heals the kiwi, yeah. and you can check them out. Yeah. And um, but yeah, so there is plenty of things to do, and uh, we hope that this will help you uh, compare those three different cities. They all have pros and cons, but hopefully, with what we give you, um, you and your friend can actually sit down, um, cross the bones. I think your real name is Paul. But uh, you and your friend can sit down and uh, actually have a discussion and see which one is the yeah. best for you. And when we do the rebroadcast of this video, um, we'll make sure to put some links in the description yeah. below so we sort of compare all those cities in the links as well. And if you do find any of our questions useful, make sure to give this video a cheeky like. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more videos about New Zealand because we do this every single week and we release all our questions throughout the week every single day.